All right. Well, when I, when I initially got the invitation for this talk, I sort of thought, well, I don't really have much to offer here. Shifting landscapes? Hmm. Then I started thinking, well, I guess that I'm in a shifting landscape because that's my personal story. It's a story of a shifting educational landscape. And so I want to show you the journey that begins here. Unfortunately, part of the slide seems to have been cut off, but you can follow this journey. There's a nice little red canoe there. Um, it'll flow down a river eventually. But I'm going to take you through a journey of how I got from a place of the outdoors, then got boxed into the indoors uh, through graduate studies and came out the other end trying to produce magic, trying to engage people in their education, um, take the wonders of the outdoors and put it in that box, sometimes that doesn't even have a window to the outdoors, and, and see if we can create something that'll, that'll change, that'll inspire. So my own journey um, started in that box. It, it started in the same sort of box that anyone starts in, high school. You know, you're stuck in these classrooms for 76-minute periods, and you're learning about something, and uh, some teacher standing at the front going, blah, 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 blah. And it, it wasn't exciting. It wasn't inspiring to me. And I was engaged. I was there trying to get the best possible mark. Um, but I wasn't engaged until I got involved in an integrated semester program. And I'm not sure how many of you know much about that, but an integrated semester program, at least the one that I was involved with, sort of threw time out the window um, and threw subjects out the window. So we were learning biology and geography and uh, phys ed and all sorts of things, and you never knew where one class ended and the next one began. It was just, you know, seamless education. And that was fantastic. That sort of got me to a place of... I love this. I love education. I love learning. Um, what it also did is put me into a place where I got to do a lot of outdoor activities. And one of the things that they did put into this integrated program were little boxes where we got to go on cool field trips. So we could go for two weeks um, canoeing or we could go, you know, outdoors for an afternoon to go mountain biking and things like that. And that was super cool. And that led me to university, where I, I took outdoor recreation, was what I studied as, in my undergrad, and that was just lots of fun. I got to do lots of canoeing, lots of climbing, and all sorts of things. So I was super engaged there. What it also did is it, it introduced me to a cohort of like-minded people. So I got to meet folks like me, who were interested in learning, and who were interested in the outdoors, and who were just interested in being engaged. And that then led me to a place, um, the Canadian Outward Bound Wilderness School, Outward Bound Canada. Um, for those that don't know much about the organization, it's uh, an organization founded by Kurt Hahn. And so I got to start to learn some of the theory behind my sort of play activities that I've been involved with for years. So with that theory, the sort of light bulb went on. Aha, I'm an outdoor educator. That's what I love to do. I love to be outside and I love to have a lot of fun doing these amazing things, but I like to take people there and I like to see their personal growth and see their skill development and things like that. And at the end of working for Outward Bound, I sort of did the dumbest thing possible. I went into grad studies. Because that's the antithesis of what Outward Bound is all about. That's getting locked in a box called your office and staring at a computer for five years. Not exciting. Um, Luckily for me, it was grad studies in New Zealand, and I was studying Antarctica, so, you know, I got 10% out of the box to go to Antarctica and 90% in the box writing away about Antarctica. And then I came back to Canada and started uh, working in higher education. So, as Steve mentioned, I'm a university professor, and so I, I spent the next 10 years trying to engage my students, trying to figure out... Nobody taught me how to be a university professor. I was a good outdoor educator, what can I do with that? So I sort of just went hit and miss. And, and finally, you know, just this past year, I um, was awarded a 3M National Teaching Fellowship, hopefully because I did something right. So what I'm going to share with you is some ideas about maybe what I did right. Well, what I did and what I've always done is, is try to get students um, or colleagues or whoever engaged. This is a picture of the Mara Burnside River, which is in Nunavut. Um, and you can go to amazing landscapes like this when you go outside. And, and the one thing that I want to say is, 
I'm talking about bringing the outside in, but I'm definitely not talking about cutting the outside out altogether. Um, if you remember Sir Ken Robinson's talk, he talked about you know, disciplines, you got math, and then you got some other sciences, and then you got some arts, and then you have outdoor-related things. Way down here. First thing to get cut from high schools, first thing to get cut um, from universities. But you can't replicate this, right? You can't, on the DVD box set or in the textbook, get the feeling of being five meters away from a thousand caribou who are snorting and clicking their hooves and stink to high heaven, right? That's an amazing experience. And so is going to the Antarctic, right? But these things take time, they involve risk, they involve costs, and that's why they get cut. But we should look at them on the flip side. These are what create amazing stories. This is a photo from Haida Gwaii out on Canada's west coast, the Queen Charlotte Islands. Um, and I I've taken students here for a number of years, and every single time, without fail, this was the best thing about my entire university education, right? And it came the very last semester. Sometimes it came in May, right before they were about to graduate. So I know that the stories from my students say that the outdoors is amazing. And there's tons of research out there to back that up. I could quote endless academic studies that say the outdoors is good. But I'm going to tell you why it's good to me. So for me, it's inspiring. It's, it's really inspiring in terms of amazing landscapes, um, just the feeling you get when the wind blows through your hair, you know, lack of hair now. It's, it's refreshing. It's sort of refreshing for your brain in terms of how the heck did these become completely 100% perfectly round balls sitting on a beach in New Zealand? It's crazy. I mean, I don't even know if scientists really know how this stuff happened. It's completely sensory. To me, the outdoors is a 100% sensory experience that the indoors doesn't provide. When I'm indoors, it's, yes, it's hot and muggy and the lights are shining down on me, but outdoors, I get the mist off the ocean, I get the breeze, you know, I can almost taste the fish drying there on the rack. Um, this is a photo from northern Norway. I get this sense that we're part of something bigger. There's a huge system of interactions that generally is missing from the in indoors. So, you know, I'm with dogs. Who knows, the 12 dogs might get in a giant fight. Who knows if the ice is going to break here and I'm going to fall into the Arctic Ocean. Um, you just never know. There's this complete system of interactions that's anybody's guess. And it's fun. Um, this is my son, Fraser. Uh, it's always fun to be in the outdoors, whether that's on your own or with your family and friends. And so now I've sort of shared you my journey. This is what Pat thinks about this. This is how he got to where he, he currently is. And it's not here, right? It's not trapped inside these four walls. This classroom's lucky enough to have a window over there in the corner. Um, you know, and it's, it's not desks bolted to the floor that is just a, sort of a, a, a totally uninspiring educational landscape. And I'm not alone in the conversation either. Um, the CBC article here really sets it up as there's this dichotomy. There is screen time and there is green time, right? And we need to watch that as we move forward. And this isn't a new idea. Richard Louvre wrote this book about 10 years ago now um, and coined the term nature deficit disorder. And that's really in the media all the time now. We need to get our kids outdoors. We need to get our kids outdoors for... X number of reasons, you know, childhood obesity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the Project Wild Thing um, video, which has just come out in 2014, is a great um, example of just how far we've gone. This, if you get a chance to see this movie, it's fantastic. It's about a guy trying to market nature the way that we market sneakers or the way that we market iPads, right? Because kids aren't into it anymore. They're not into nature, so we got to sell it like Google and Apple and all the other companies do. So for me, it's about translating the messages that I get outside, inside. It's about being a facilitator. It's about um, connecting my students to each other. It's about, number one, it's about taking risks. It's about saying, 
I'm going to do this, and if it's a big flop, well, I'll learn from that, right? Success is failure after failure with enthusiasm. I think Winston Churchill said that. So how do I take that and, and, and really come up with an idea? And what I'm proposing is what we need to do is better blend the outdoors in. We need to turn things outside in. And in doing so, we need to think about blended learning. And traditionally, blended learning means we take technology into the classroom, right? That's blended learning, on-site, online, ta-da. I'm saying we need to take outside and inside and blend them a little bit better as well. So how do we do this? This is, you know, six lessons from my thinking over the last couple of years. We need to talk more about shared responsibility. Um, one thing that I've learned from being outside when you're on a ski trip, um, what you do as a participant or what I do as a leader affects everyone else. There's a shared responsibility here that there typically isn't in the indoor classroom. In the, in the classroom, there's typically, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to spit information at you and then six months later, I'm going to ask you to spit it back at me, right? That's the way that exams work. That's not what I'm proposing here. I'm proposing that, okay, we have a question. We want to explore this question. I don't have all the answers, but I can help you get there, right? I'm going to risk as much as you're going to risk. We don't know. The second part is it's, it's all about interpersonal connections. It's all about, you know, letting students introduce themselves to one another. Tell us what their biases are, you know? Explain where they're coming from on this idea. We don't need... Well, John Smith told us this, and it's so. That's exactly the answer. We want them to think about, well, I don't agree with this theory, and, and I'd like to discuss it with the three of you who are my classmates. You're not, my, you're not the teacher. You're not experts. You're just people with different perspectives. So that kind of shared responsibility and then also um, interpersonal relationships are important. I think it's also critical that we connect to places better. And even if we're inside, even if we're in the, in the classroom, we can connect better to, you know, if we're going to learn about a river delta, why do we learn about the Nile? Why don't we learn about one that's local? Maybe we're lucky enough to have a little stream outside our institution and we can go out and check out what an eddy line looks like there instead of learning about a generic one that's on the Amazon River 7,000 kilometers away. I think we also need to in our educational systems, and, I, and I'm speaking mostly to higher education, but it could be true of K-12 to as well. We need to think about balance. We need to think about process and content, not just, I gotta spit as much content at you as I possibly can, hopefully some of it hits you and sticks, right? But I wanna talk to you about how we learn, what we learn. If you heard a neat story in the news last week, let's bring that into the picture too. And above all, after we've gone on that journey, how do we apply it, right? What do we do with that in the real world so that we're not just having this, out, you know, outside of our body experience in the, in the classroom or, or when we're outside? We also, at least for me as an instructor, need to remain a learner, right? I need to be able to, I need to be willing to risk as much as I'm asking my students to risk. And I need to be able to reflect on my practice so I'm not making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And this is, you know, critical when you're outdoors, so why can't we bring it indoors? I need to reflect on, oops, I made a bad decision when we decided to paddle into the wind and three canoes tipped over. Or, you know, maybe we should take a rest day today because everyone's so tired we're going to start making mistakes, right? And I need to learn and reflect on that learning um, as we go forward. So again, my message is about blending um, learning, not having that dichotomy of one versus the other. Um, and I also want to sort of put a stop to maybe the notion that I've set up already that this learning comes from fancy, faraway expeditions. Because I definitely believe that we should also think about it in our everyday life. We should, we should think about, as an educator, can I engage my students you know, in, in an hour and a half block, can I take them outside for 20 minutes? And then we come back inside, and then maybe we go outside again. And we do that in the, the parking lot behind the school, or we do that in the, 
You know, the grass that's over there between two university buildings, it doesn't have to be expensive, it doesn't have to be far away. And one of the concepts that I think really speaks to this well is a Scandinavian concept of free lift sleeve, which is free air life. And it's just about getting that free air life, you know, the stumbling, fumbling through nature on an everyday basis. And can we bring the magic that happens there just back into the classroom? So at the end of the day, um, have the, the sort of ways that I've decided to bring the outdoors in, have they been successful? Um, these are two um, letters that students wrote for me, and one is a, a Facebook chat post from last week, or uh, sorry, last month. And, and I hope that I have been successful, because it's not about, you know, at the end of the day, do students like my class? Do I get good numbers on the teaching evals? Do they decide to take more classes? You know, did they graduate? It's about what they do with these experiences way, way down the road. So the two students that wrote letters here, they're from 10 years ago, and they're just writing to say, you know, that I gave them some sort of inspiration in the way that I decided to teach um, and, and shifted the way that they will hopefully uh, teach in the future. So thanks a lot. Um, thanks for listening. And if you do want to continue this conversation, I'm, I'm happy to chat on the break.